Hi, I'm Exo, and this video will continue this week's trend of sound card informational videos. Today we're going to talk about the Gravis Ultrasound. Uh, released in 92, it was an add-on card for your PC, and it was advertised as a wavetable card. Rather than playing synthesized music samples, uh, or synthesized music, you could load real-world music samples to it. So the idea was, if someone recorded individual piano notes as WAV files, you could then feed those up to it through an instrument patch and then play them back directly off the card. This is uh, really advanced and really interesting. However, there was a fatal flaw with the card in that it was not Sound Blaster compatible. And Sound Blaster was by far the most ubiquitous sound card available at the time. So not only could you not go back and play all your old Sound Blaster games, but as new games came out, developers had to decide if they would take the time to support this wildly different sound card. Now, Epic Mega Games was one developer that was known for really deciding, nope, this is it, this is the future. They went 100% that way. Similar to how Sierra decided to adopt the IBM Music Feature card or the MT32. Now, there is a technicality here. There was a way to kind of emulate the Sound Blaster or AdLib style over a Gravis Ultrasound. However, it required running a very memory-hungry TSR. TSRs were programs that ran in memory all the time. So generally in DOS, the only things that ran in memory all the time were your basic drivers, your mouse driver, your CD-ROM driver. Um, and especially in the early days of DOS, when you had super limited RAM, you had to keep things cleared out. You had to make it as open as possible or your game just wasn't going to run. And RAM was not cheap at the time. To have a megabyte of RAM uh, prior to 88 was almost unheard of if you weren't in a commercial setting or your dad didn't, you know, <laughs> work for a TI or somebody like that. Now, the Gravis Ultrasound is interesting in that uh, I'm not even playing games, I'm getting achievements over here. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, the ultrasound was a bit of tribalism in my opinion. The people who loved it swore by it and would swear about it. <laughs> there was a, a very semi-healthy, maybe even unhealthy discourse related to uh, competition of fans of the Gravis ultrasound. Um, the only other thing I can think of at the time that felt the same to me was kind of the IBM versus PC. I'm sorry, IBM versus Mac. Um, I worked for CompUSA, which was a large computer retailer in the U.S., and I happened to work at their flagship store in Addison, Texas, back when I was in high school. Uh, we would have to ask people to kindly stop proselytizing in our aisles. Um, we had a very small Macintosh software aisle. And it wasn't because we didn't support it. It's because that's all that was being released for it at the time. Yeah, we could have given it three aisles if there was enough software to fill three aisles. But there wasn't. So we bought, or the store bought whatever uh, was out. And we had a small aisle for it. And what would happen is the Macintosh users would start meandering over into the IBM PC software aisles. And start harassing customers and asking them why they were buying IBM stuff. Or uh, debating as to whether or not the Mac was better. To be fair, I don't remember an IBM user ever wandering into the Mac aisle and doing the same thing. <laughs> it was a strange bit of tribalism. Um, very loyal customers on the Mac side. And the Gravis Ultrasound, in its own way, had a similar type of loyalty from its users. Now, let's go down here and find a game. I think Doom is in here, and I'm going to pick Doom because it's a, I like using soundtracks people know. So we'll fire this guy up here. We're going to change the sound card. We did the sound. Man, I'm just getting all kinds of achievements over here. I think that achievement was for a game I played like three or four months ago. Why am I getting achievements now for it? It was Terra Nils. Really cool game, but anyway. Uh, let's fire the sound blaster up, just in case you're not super familiar with Doom. Almost there, a little bit more. 
Can the drums kick in to compare them? And yes, believe it or not, that is uh, the ad lib or sound blaster version of drums that we got there. Now this time we're going to fire up the uh, Gravis Ultra sound. You have a little bit of stereo layering going on. The drums are clearer. But I can't help feel like the game sounds wrong. Um, that could be because I didn't grow up hearing it that way. Now, the second part of that is Doom is not a great example. Uh, Doom was not developed with the Gravis in mind. So let's go to one of the Epic Mega Games, as those are going to be games that were designed with the Gravis in mind. Uh, I believe Raptor heavily benefits from it. We'll go Sound Blaster first. Now I said Epic. This is clearly not Epic, it's Apogee. But I think these guys did a pretty good job. Let's get over to the main menu. Here we go. Pretty standard synth. Now we're going to fire it up with the Gravis. So we got some much more distinct electric guitar hiding in there. The drums. I like drums. One thing that I don't know if it's the way that DOSBox emulates it or if it's how the graphics actually sounded, but there's a lot more reverb. And I think, I'm totally guessing here, that they would use the reverb to hide the beginning and end of the sound samples. If you were to record a piano playing every note possible, but then play them all back to back, it would still sound like individual notes. Whereas when you play the piano, there is a sustain on each note as that string reverberates inside the piano. So it's not ding, 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 ding. It's, dee, 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 dee. it's got a flow to it. Again, I'm a, not a musician, so I apologize for my examples. But I think the reverb on the dust was designed to hide. Let's do one more here. Uh, Crusader No Remorse was one that uh, the guys over in the Discord were um, keen on me demoing for the Gravis Ultrasound. Origin Systems did have decent um, support for the Gravis. We'll fire this guy up here. This is a game that I always, it looks so cool to me and I've never been very good at it. It's not an easy game. Isometric shooter, really good animation. Let's jump into the game. The sound is very quiet for me. Let's get past all the intro stuff. Here we go. You're not supposed to be here. I'm gonna... Oh jeez, I already messed up. Oh yeah. I can't hit this guy. Finally. There's nothing to see here, folks. Oh. This is not going to be a very long game, demo. Security. Got past those three. There's going to turn the next one coming up. No turret. Just not. 
would help if I knew what the buttons were. I'm just guessing. I shoot that. It's a good soundtrack, though. Uh, my bad gameplay aside. Let's go ahead and start the same game up now as the final part of this video and compare it to the Sound Blaster version. Let's see if I can shoot the guy before he sets the alarm off this time. Yeah, that's right. Oh, they're coming anyway? Yeah. Not a bad soundtrack still, um, but definitely more limited. You can live this time. Whoa! That didn't happen last time. Oh, jeez. What happened? Can I pick that up? Oh, got no white. Yeah, so I would really like to pick this up. I bet you can. The way it's sitting there. Maybe not. I've got no idea. But it's not about this game. Hints about the soundtrack. The Gravisulter sound. I'll pull it back up again here. It's this card right here. Um, really unique card. I'm glad we have some support for it, even if it's only 70 games. Um, like every other sound card, I encourage you to just listen to it on each game and see which ones stand out most for you. Thanks, guys.